Hi there, welcome to another episode of Amputee Outdoors. I'm your host, Glenn, and today we're gonna to review the 15-in-1 survival kit from High Asia. Got a lot of these kits out there in the market. Some of them are good, some of them are not so good. Let's check this out and see what we find. Stay tuned. All right, so I haven't actually even opened this yet. So this is gonna be an unboxing and a review uh, kind of video. So let's see what we've got here. All right, let's put that there. Little plastic case. Got a couple of loops here that you could tie it to something that would be convenient. Looks like a fairly sturdy case. Let's see now. Okay, one thing to notice right off the bat, these little latches here, they're a plastic latch and I can see that over time, this being opened and closed a few times, that plastic there is gonna wear and it's gonna snap off. Um, that's just something that happens with some plastics, material fatigue. Open this up and let's see. Okay, so it's got an eggshell kind of padding here to keep everything nice and safe. And one thing I'm noticing right off the bat that I do not like, um, and that is everything except for a few things like this is black. Now, if you've um, read a couple of my other pieces on um, amputeeoutdoors.com, you'll know that my preference is for items that have some kind of bright color on them so that if you drop them at dusk or in the rain or they fall on the dark ground where it's kind of muddy and there's leaves, something that's black is gonna be hard to find. And in a survival situation, I want to be able to find those things. If I, if I drop my flashlight and it's not on, on the ground and it's getting dark and it's black, I'm gonna have a hard time finding that flashlight. That's the last thing I want. I wanna be able to find it immediately. So that's something I'm not liking right off the bat. I'm gonna take a point off for that. And as we go along, I'm gonna go through each one of these items and I'm gonna rate them one to five and then we'll have a overall score at the end, okay? All right, so let's start with a flashlight. Um, let's see here, got a nice little clip here to put onto your belt on off button that doesn't do anything because I'm betting it does not come with batteries. Let's see here. How is this opened? Oh, here we go. This comes off here, okay? And yes, no batteries. Fortunately, I brought some along. Hang on a second. All right, so it looks like it just takes a double single uh, double A, so let's pop that in there. So if you're gonna buy this for someone for a gift, you probably want to include some batteries when you give it to them. I must put that battery in backwards. It's not coming on. The spring at both ends, that's interesting. Hmm. Not coming on at all. I checked these batteries before I brought them and I know that they're good. However, I do have some extra batteries, so let me get those out and, and try a couple more. All right. Two more batteries. Let's try these. Nope, no light. Reverse the battery. Perhaps I have it in there backwards. Yeah, no light again. Well, that is concerning. That's two different batteries that I've tried. I know they were good. Last battery here. Yeah, nothing. Yes, reverse it and see if that makes any difference. All right. So this is not a good start to the uh, review, is it? Nope, nothing. So the flashlight gets a zero. All right, let's put the flashlight over there. Next thing here, since it's laying out, is this emergency blanket. This is your typical kind of Mylar emergency blanket. I've used these in the past just to make um, a shelter, just to practice making a shelter, which I recommend you do. Um, I've given these out actually on a, on a hike once when I came across a couple that were wearing well, a lot of cotton and it was cold and wet and they were shivering. So I gave them a couple of emergency blankets I had to wrap around them. So it's always good to carry these. Um, I'm going to give this a default five out of five because I know from practical experience Mylar blankets work. They're good to have and this like all the others reflects 90% of the body heat. So we're going to go straight to a five for this one. Next up is this tiny little multi-tool. 
and it is tiny. However, it does seem to be pretty functional. That screwdriver is really tiny, but it has the usual assortment of nail files because in an emergency situation, you must keep your nails filed at all times. Um, and a screwdriver, often in the woods, I come across a Phillips head screwdriver stuck in a tree that I need to remove, so that's good to have. Bottle opener, again, I don't know that I would have come across a survival situation where I need a bottle opener. Flathead screwdriver, uh, this is more like a can opener, bottle opener, and over here, what do we have? A couple of other little screws, hole punch perhaps. A knife here as well. In a survival situation, this might, the pliers actually might be coming in handy. The other tools I have some doubts about. And it does also have a ruler that you can see along there. You'd have to straighten this a lot to get it. Again, I've never understood what a ruler would do in a survival situation. Um, but it might be handy to have to measure the little fish that you caught perhaps. This is small. I don't know if it's a survival tool so much. I'm sure though with some creativity and some imagination, you could find lots of ways of using this to help keep yourself alive. However, in a situation perhaps where you're traveling and some kind of situation comes up that you need some of these tools, this might come in handy. It is very small though. I mean, it is tiny. I'm gonna give this a three out of five uh, for its size and it does seem a little bit flimsy. Next up, ah, now no, this is not a straw, although you could use it as a straw. This is actually a very useful tool when you're getting your fire started. To, so you're not right there in the fire and you can direct the, the um, air that you're blowing right there onto the tinder or the kindling to get it going. This is a useful little item here. This is definitely a survival tool kind of kit to carry around with you. Feels fairly sturdy actually. Yeah, yeah, I like this. I'm gonna give this a five out of five because I know for one thing, starting a fire, I will use this. I mean, we've all probably used one of these at one time or another and then lost them because they fold up and they're so small. Um, but these are definitely a useful tool. I'm gonna to give this a five out of five. Next up, ah, here we go. We have the famous saw string. There we go. You know what? I'm gonna go find a piece of wood and let's see how well this does. Stand by. Let's get this around here and start sawing. Am I getting through? Yep. I got through that much before I needed to break it. So that's not bad. So this uh, wire log cutter, I would say is pretty good. The rings here, doing it even for that short amount of time, started to really kind of pull on my fingers and, and ache a little bit. In a survival situation though, this is probably gonna work well for you. It's just not as comfortable as it could be. Still, I'm gonna give it a four out of five. All right, next up is the uh, fishing kit. Now, obviously I'm not gonna go spend a couple of hours fishing and video, the video that for you. Um, I'll just tell you what's in here. There's a couple of bobs, uh, some weights, one, two hooks, three hooks, different sizes, a little lure there, a little plastic lure and a fishing line. This would probably work. Uh, you know what? I'm going to not give this a score because I cannot test it. So I'm gonna leave this as a non-applicable in, in, in my rating. However, it looks like it would work and it seems to have all the pieces that you would probably need to be able to catch a, you know, a fish in a lake or something that's you know not too deep. You don't have to go too deep to get to the fish where they're swimming but I'm not gonna score this because I cannot test it. All right, next up. Ah, so this is the tactical pen. This end here is for breaking glass um, if you're trapped in your car. This end is obviously for writing. And yes, it does write, so that's good. It is quite a, a sturdy piece of pen and standard ink 
cartridge in there. Having this here to break a glass if you're trapped in your car or something like that, very handy. This would probably be something that I wouldn't necessarily leave in the kit. I'd probably actually leave this in my car where I could actually use this. I'm gonna give this a four out of five as well. Again, it's black. If I drop this and it's getting dark or just drop it on some dirty ground, muddy ground, leaves and pine cones all over the place, it's gonna be hard to find. So point off right off the bat for that. Uh, let me see here, tactical pin, four. All right, what's next? Oh, this is one of those um, wallet card things. This is also a useful little thing too. I like this. Um, again, it's got a little measuring thing across there. Don't know what I would necessarily need to measure, but this is a useful little tool. Little knife, serrated edge, bottle opener, can opener, a little, little bit of an edge right there too. Some twine there that you can use for tying things. Yeah, this is actually quite useful and it's got the little hex nuts there. Again, survival situation out in the woods. I don't know what I'm gonna use for, you know, a hex nut fitting or a flathead screwdriver, but it's there. Again, this is something I would probably actually keep in my wallet um, rather than in a survival kit because this might come in handy in my wallet in an emergency situation where I do need to tighten or loosen some hex nut or I have a flathead screwdriver or open a bottle of beer after a hard day at work. Again, four out of five, because it's black, I drop this on the ground, pretty much disappears. Next up, whistle. This is definitely a survival emergency out in the woods kind of piece of kit. Being able to make it easy for people to find you is one of the priorities when you're stuck out in the woods and you're lost. I also like the fact that this is a bright silver color. If I drop this on the ground, I'll be able to see it. I'll be able to identify it very quickly. And I won't lose it so easily. Does it work? Well, let's find out. Oh, that's pretty good. You, you would hear that across good distances. I like that. This whistle gets a five. Okay, next up, the knife. Again, tactical black, not crazy about that. that. Flips open pretty good, that locks pretty good. Got a little clip right there to put onto your belt. I like the fact that the grip itself has got some um, roughness to it. So if your hands are wet, they're not gonna slide so easily on the knife. Good serrated edge. Fairly wide at the back, so if you're putting this onto a piece of wood and you're trying to split the wood, you've got something good to hit there as you go down. Good locking mechanism there. Again, right there, that is for breaking glass if you're stuck in your car. See? This right here, that is for uh, cutting open the seat belt. If your seat belt gets jammed and you're stuck, you take this, pull it, and rip open your seatbelt so you can get out, smash the glass with this, and get out of the car. It opens up very nicely. Bit of a wobble right there. So I don't know that you would use it in extremely harsh conditions for very long without it starting to have some problems and that little screw there start to come loose. Nonetheless, I do like this knife. So the knife gets a four out of five. Next up, the spork. That's interesting. It looks like it has a whistle at the end here. It's a whistle. Huh. I don't, I don't know why they would put a whistle um, at the end of a, of a spork, but there it is. Ah, interesting. So this pulls open and you've got another little tool at the end. You've got your knife and a uh, bottle opener there. So that's nice. So that's an interesting little feature. And it does have some uh, shoestring that comes with it. I suppose to um, tie it somewhere. I'm not sure if I would even want to tie it there because then it'd get in the way when I'm eating my food with the spork. Nonetheless, it's uh, good to have. You can use this for a variety of things when you're in a survival situation. Spork itself, it's a little, it's a little short. Now, if you're used to using a uh, mountain house for your backpacking meals or your emergency meals, with this spork, you're gonna get your hand all the way down into that bag to be able to get out that food down there at the bottom. 
So it's, its size is a bit of a drawback, but the functionality of having this extra little knife here, it's not very sharp. I mean, it would cut where you need it to cut. If you're cutting your meat and then you need to eat it with this, that would work. And having the whistle on there is, is also a neat little feature. Unusual, but a neat feature. But that's the size of it, that being so short, kind of undermines the functionality a little bit. Um, still, I'm gonna give this about a three out of five, 3.5. Next up is fire starter. Fire starters kind of go back and forth in terms of their quality. Some are extremely good, some not so good. Let's find out about this one. You got your striker stick here. Again, got the little hex nut thing there because once you're out in the woods, there's so many things that need a quarter inch hex nut that need tightening. You just, you, you gotta have one of these. Something to measure um, centimeters and millimeters for, because again, how many millimeters thick that piece of wood is that you're about to use on your fire is crucially important. This little part here, this looks good. This is for taking your piece of wood, shaving it down like this to get some nice um, tinder, some nice fine tinder, okay? The grip here looks pretty good. It's got the usual black paint there. Oh, those are some, those are some decent sparks. Oh yeah, this is good. This is, I like this. This is getting a five out of five. Hmm. On second thoughts, maybe not. Again, it's all black. I drop this on the ground and I lose it. It's gonna be hard to find. Still, those are some pretty decent sparks. So I'll give it a 4.5 out of five, taking off half a point because it's black. All right, what's next? A couple of carabiners. Now in the advertisement uh, for this survival kit, and I'll put a link to it down below in the description. It shows a, a gentleman climbing up a mountain. And so you would think that these would be um, suitable for mountain climbing. However, on both of these, it does say not for climbing. So don't go climbing with these. Um, these are your typical kind of carabiners with a quick lock like that. I don't know that I would use these even for setting up a hammock, um, but for you know, something like setting up um, a rain fly or some other kind of cover over you, these would be useful or attaching to your backpack, you know, items that you want to suspend off the back of your backpack. These would be perfectly fine. But again, it's all black. Drop on the ground, what happens? That's right, gonna be hard to find. I'm gonna give these a three out of five. I would, in a survival situation, I would want something a little bit more sturdy. These are very lightweight and I can tell just by the machining of this hinge here, these are not something that you would want to put your life uh, on the line, literally, uh, with. So I'm gonna give these a three out of five. All right, and the last item we have here is the survival bracelet with a compass. All right, so the first thing we're gonna check with this compass is if it's accurate or not. And I just so happen to have a compass with me. And is this pointing the same way? Yes, this compass does actually work correctly. Okay, so that's good. That's good to have. It's got a whistle works um and is this a fire starter in here it is it's got a little ferro rod right in there right between these two things so what's interesting is if you try to use this ferro rod you'd break these two things here doing so and that ferro rod there is about three quarters of an inch so that ferro rod is not going to do you much good the uh, power cord bracelet that you've got here easily fit around your wrist probably has about 20 feet perhaps of um, paracord. The nice thing with paracord, if it's true paracord, it's got seven strands in it. So you could take that out and use that as extra fishing line if you need to. Um, it does have a striker plate right there. Let me see if I can actually get a spark. Okay, so that might actually work for you. And yeah, I did scratch, you can't see it here, but I did scratch up these two plastic fittings that hold it together. So 
using it too much you would break it but in a survival situation this might just make it for you i'm going to give this again a four out of five the olive green and black again drop it on the ground i've lost it and i don't want to lose my survival gear you'll notice my compass here has got this bright yellow greenish reflective cord on it so if i do drop this i'm going to see this all right so let me get some scores put together here i'll run some figures some numbers and get back to you with a overall score stand by all right having gone through everything and tallied up all the scores i come out with a average score of 3.7 um, what really brought it down was that flashlight that did not work with three um, different batteries that really tanked the score uh, had it not been for the flashlight, this probably would have come out at around about a four, which, uh, which is a pretty good score. There are some things about this that I think would make it really useful. Number one, of course, making it so that um, the uh, parts in here are easily seen, making them a blue color, a safety orange, a safety yellow, things like that. Tactical black, tactical cool, camouflage is all well and fine if you're a Marine or in the Army and you need to be hidden and, and, and avoid being found but if you are out in the woods and you're not a hunter you're not trying to hide where you are for a particular purpose you need to be found in a survival situation brightly colored things are crucial that's why there's a whistle in here so you can be found so it makes sense that not only should you be found by hearing you should be found by visual indicators as well so my recommendation for the manufacturers from um, high asia make this box safety orange or bright green or bright blue and the items within it the same thing make them bright colored all of these things here some of them i probably would have given a five had it not been for the fact that they were tactical black so there you have it my friends total score of 3.7 i hope this uh, video has been useful for you um, and if it influences your decision to buy one of these there's a link down below if you click on that link as an uh, amazon affiliate i will get a small percentage of the um, of the sale as always my friends hope to see you out there on the trail getting out there enjoying nature and i'll see you out there bye now